Thank you, Buff, for upgrading your $3 tier to the $10 tier. You are what keeps the dream alive. All right, let's get into it. Hey everybody, do right back at it again with another video on 9 to 5. Apparently people were able to actually talk about what we experienced in the alpha without showing anything, so this is that video. So I'm not really sure what I expected from this game. Like, the only reason that I actually decided to look at it was because somebody from the Arma series was working on this game, and I had a buddy who lives in Finland said that he actually played it, along with the fact that they had multiple big-name people from big-name companies. So I guess that I was kind of going into this game thinking that it was going to be like a tactical game just because i saw somebody was from bohemia but after playing it it's pretty obvious that this game isn't in the tactical sense of an arma game or a game like squad or anything like that i mean when i saw the trailer that's what it kind of looked like that the game wasn't going to be in the tactical sense of the type of games that i play no it's more in line with um I guess a close comparison would be Rainbow Six Siege, but I would say that this game brings a lot more to the table. Like, there are definitely more unique modes that are found here than what you would find in Siege. Like, you've got a attack and defend mode. You can either defend an objective or defend an area. Sometimes you're able to choose where you want to place that down by finding some sort of key or picking a spot to hold an objective. Sometimes the game modes consist of three different objectives to do. There was quite a bit of game modes. I mean, I don't think I think I've actually played one game mode more than once because they kept changing after every match. The matches themselves consisted of nine rounds and they went relatively fast because most of the time, a good majority of the players seem to kill each other than actually, you know, play the objectives. And I probably should have mentioned this, but this game is also a 3v3v3 and each team is always doing something. Like their objective is to either attack or defend or steal it for themselves. It's just very hard to keep up with what's actually going on. Like by the time I actually figure out what's sort of going on the game just kind of ends because the enemy team already accomplished their objective and yeah you only get one life but you could keep coming back as four different types of bot you got like a healer you got like a bot that electrocutes people and there are two others but I can't remember them like the bots are basically there to try and delay the inevitable like it was very rare that I actually saw the bots being useful but there was one time when I did see an electricity bot actually zap someone and kill them so I guess they can be effective the game keeps going until the other two teams are eliminated or you complete your objective or objectives so yeah this game is very unique in terms of the amount of game modes that it has and also how creative they can get with it so that's one thing that i actually quite like about the game although i'm not entirely sure if it was executed in a way that makes sense because these matches go relatively fast and doesn't give you a whole lot of time to actually learn these game modes but i guess when in doubt just kill people the game itself looks and feels very asset heavy as in they got a bunch of stuff from the asset store and you could like really feel like it was like that especially when you're looking at the menu and you're trying to customize your guy like the guy that you start out with he has like a mask and a helmet and a regular t-shirt and pants on and you had the ability to take off the mask but when you take it off like the whole head just disappears just leaving the torso and legs you take off the torso the whole torso disappears with the head still there and the pants are still there like it just it just felt very bot asset heavy but from what i understand a majority of the stuff is actually made in house i'm not saying that i don't believe them or that bot assets are a bad thing i'm just saying that it really feels like they got a lot of the stuff from the store i mean maybe they have a dude that worked on a lot of bot assets and he's using his skills to you know make this game i don't know but yeah the game looks and feels like bot assets again that's not a bad thing because it actually feels like a game like they actually put effort into it and not just slapped it all together so i just want to make that clear that it doesn't feel like an asset flip or anything like that the gunplay itself is just okay like i think that it's passable but for the most part it just feels like it doesn't give you a whole lot of feedback and what i made by feedback as in like when you shoot it doesn't feel like the dude like pulls the gun back enough to make it simulate they are actually firing off around like the only indication that i could actually see is when i actually shoot at somebody it shows the indicator like a red x every time that i hit someone yeah if you have 
haven't realized by now, this game is very on the arcadey side. Definitely not at all a game that I would be interested in, but maybe for someone that plays a lot of Rainbow Six Siege or Battle Royale games, you might actually find this pretty intriguing. They implement a lot of features from a lot of arcadey games, like I said before, the Red X, and also the pinging system that indicates where somebody might be, or a bad guy might be, or you're just pointing something out. And they also have gadgets that allows them to place down like a mine or a turret or something. You could like barricade walls and all that, and it seemed to be infinite so long as you're actually barricading a spot that can be barricaded. The gunplay is very hit or miss. Like, there will be times when I just shoot somebody and they'll die instantly, or I'm using the same gun and I shoot somebody and it takes forever for them to actually go down. So I think that has to do with, um, I guess the type of armor that they're wearing, because when I started out, I just had like a plain t-shirt, but a lot of the guys that I would go up against had like some sort of armor on, like a face shield and a football like chest armor. There is like a bit of a leveling system, so I guess you have to level up in order for you to get like armor and all that stuff. So yeah, you can edit your weapons. I believe you can also add attachments to them too, but I really don't recall. I also believe that they have different tiers of armor when I think about it because they had like a health bar and an armor bar on the bottom left, but it seems like anytime that you get shot in that specific spot, the armor bar, whatever part, the torso or the legs would go away or the helmet indicating that you no longer have armor on. Your health would go down too, but you can also heal yourself. And I'm not sure... I tried using it, but I think it was broken. Like, I'm not sure. Like, the health kit didn't seem to go on. I think it was glitched. I mean, I was expecting this kind of thing because this is their alpha here, so I was expecting a whole lot of bugs. But surprisingly, there wasn't that many bugs. And if anything, it actually ran really well. But it's probably due to the fact that the game seems very simplistic. It isn't exactly the most graphical game I've ever seen. There's only like nine players. I believe that there was maybe like two or three maps that I got to play on. The maps are decently big, but they have a lot of stuff in them, like core doors, different levels, like corridors, different levels of the buildings, places for people to hop into buildings and hop out, look out windows, barricade. The maps were actually pretty well done for the most part. And I think the ones that I played also had underground corridors. The UI screen for the menu was relatively easy to navigate, but it was a bit hard to try and figure out how to put on perks. Oh yeah, and they have perks by the way. I don't think that the perks really had that much of an impact on gameplay, or if it did, I don't, I haven't really noticed it, but they're there. So uh, yeah. Yeah, not sure how useful they are. I was able to get into a match with three other players. I was able to get full matches with 3v3v3, but there was like a couple of times when either somebody dropped out or I'd get into a match where I'd actually have three people on a team, but the other teams either were non-existent or there was just one other guy. So the matchmaking system seems to be a little wonky, it seems. And yeah, I think the last thing that I want to say is that the leveling up system seemed to take a while. Like you have to actually keep playing the game to actually get that leveled. But I think I played quite a few games and it didn't level up all the way. Way. But yeah, so yeah, it makes a lot of sense as to why this game feels very optimized. It's because everything is very simplistic. At least that's what it feels like to me. I actually talked with a lot of people who got into this alpha and I've gotten a lot of mixed responses. Like some that said that it was really bad and then others that said that it was very good. So I'm not really sure what to take away from that aside from everybody seems to have their own different experiences. I think the best way to go about this game is to simply try it out and see for yourself if you actually like it or not. Because for me, it is also kind of a mixed bag. This game feels like it's going to go free to play. I, I'm not entirely sure if that's true. And don't take my word for it, but I'm just saying that it kind of feels like it, but don't take my word for it because I have no idea if this game is going to have a price tag or not. If in the case that it is, then I would urge you to try it out because this is definitely not a game that I would play, but I could definitely see a whole lot of people who would actually have fun with this type of mode because it certainly brings a whole lot to the table that not a lot of other games would do. It certainly is a different experience. But yeah, those are just my thoughts on 9 to 5. I definitely think that it's something worth trying. It was a very interesting experience, but it's definitely not my type of game. But hey, maybe it's something that you like. So did you play the alpha? Did you guys get invited? Or were you able to join? Did you think that this was a game worth trying out? What are your thoughts? I want to actually know what you guys think down below, whether it be good or bad. Oh, well, I'm going to end it here. If you're someone that enjoys the fact that I cover games like 9 to 5, then why don't you go ahead and like the video, share, and comment down below. Be sure to tell me what you thought of the game. If you did actually play it. If you're someone that's brand new, be sure to subscribe and ding the bell. You never know, you might find something that you like on the channel. If you're someone that would like to support the channel, check out my Patreon. Just send two bucks a month. It really helps. And with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.